Welcome to the greatest podcast in sports betting entertainment. My name is Tanner Kern, certified G, bona fide stud, and you can't teach that. In this right here, this is G Money Grant Mitchell. His power is back on today, and he is back on the show, and you can't teach that. Bada boom. Man, the people in the room. Welcome into Ride the Line, Grant. Are you riding today? I'm riding, Tanner. Riding through the internet troubles, riding through the power troubles. It was really funny because when my power went out, naturally went outside on the balcony, did a little look around to see what the was going on in the surrounding areas for a quarter second, my power flicked on, and so obviously my lights came back on and everything. Looking out just at the town around me, the entire town lit up for that quarter second, and then everything just shut off again. So it wasn't just me. Everybody was going through it. I don't know why. It wasn't raining. It wasn't windy. It wasn't really bad with we- uh, weather, but power was out from probably 6 in the morning to about one in the afternoon so had to miss the recording times but i'm back and i'm back to talk about some thursday night football yeah the weather was really bad on the east coast like i was not in boston when you lost power i was in connecticut but i know in boston like my apartment had some power outages there there were power outages all up and down the east coast so bad bad weather i was in florida for a wedding this past weekend it rained the entire time i forgot you were there it rained the entire like the whole trip yeah, like the wedding was moved inside because of how bad the rain was. I'm lucky that I got back to Connecticut on the flight because of just how bad the weather was. But anyways, the people don't want to hear about the weather. The people want to hear about the picks because the people don't need the picks, Grant. People, people don't, don't want, want the picks, Tanner. Now, we have not done this in so long. <laughs> we have not used that phrase in so long that I forgot what it was. Can't screw I'm that sorry. up. Come on now. The people don't want the picks, Grant. The people need the pick stater, and that's why we're here to give it to them. There we go. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, guys. Like, share, comment, do it all, and let's get into the picks. Grant, break down the game for me. Yeah, so obviously Thursday Night Football, we got a showdown between the L.A. Los Angeles Rams and the New Orleans Saints. Now this game is huge for playoff implications. If you look At the standings, look at the NFC South. You will find the Saints are tied with the Buccaneers for first in that division. However, the Saints are behind the Bucs by way of tiebreaker. Right now, those two teams have played each other once, the Buccaneers once, and the Bucs also have a better divisional record. So they hold the tiebreaker advantage in in two scenarios. Uh, Looking over at the Rams, though, right now they are the seventh seed in the NFC. So they keep winning they can control their own destiny they can make it into the playoffs i saw somebody do a little breakdown there was like a i think it was a nine percent chance the rams make the playoffs with a loss a 60 percent chance they make it with a win so to say that the stakes are super high would not be much of an understatement here and it's been a really interesting situation to monitor because going into the season saints were kind of expected to dominate that division by most people, except for you. You predicted the Bucks, so shout out to you because you've been mostly right so far. Whereas the Rams, they won that week one game against the Seahawks, and then they were just terrible for most of the season, like everyone project predicted. But now they've been winning games again. Well, the Rams just haven't been super healthy. Like, that's been a big issue for them. As far as the NFC South goes, this is a massive matchup for the NFC South because the Buccaneers and Saints are tied record-wise. Again, as you said, the Bucs have that tiebreaker, but they're going to play in a week. So that game's probably going to be like the pseudo-NFC South championship. Bucks do have a tough one against the Jags on Sunday. Probably no Trevor Lawrence in that game, but still a very tough matchup for them to find a way to win that. But the Buccaneers are playing really well, so that's one thing going for them. I will be glued to this game because of how much I want the Buccaneers to make the playoffs and win the NFC South. Um, so big matchup here. I'm going to lay the points with the Los Angeles Rams. I think overall they're the better team. The Saints just haven't found that guy that can go out, stretch the field, and consistently be a threat in the passing game. Right, Derek Carr has not answered the call. They're very good on the defensive side of the ball. It's the one reason they've been in games, but their offense just hasn't answered the call. If they've had a decent offense this season, they'd be one of the best teams not one of the best teams in the NFC. I shouldn't say that. that's a bit of a stretch, but one of the they'd, they'd be clearly winning the NFC South if they had somewhat of an offense. You look at their offensive rankings, according to Cold Hard Football Facts, they rank 16th in scoreability. They rank 18th in offensive rusher rating, 17 in offensive pass rating. So they're more towards the back of the league. And they're really not playing against the best competition in the NFC South. So the, the fact that their offense hasn't got started, I just don't see it getting started at this point in the season. Lay the points with the Rams. They're playing well right now. They got the, the weapons. 
weapons with Cooper Cup and Puka and all these guys. Matthew Stafford's playing well, minus four. That was a full breakdown. Yeah, so the full Rams, breakdown. they've won four out of their last five games. Last week, Tanner, get, where, how, where's my finger here? Against this team right here. Not the most impressive win. Feels like anybody can beat the Commanders. But they did put 31 on the Ravens and went to overtime against them. If they don't blow that special teams assignment, maybe we're having a conversation about them beating the Ravens. They smoke the Browns. They get a win against the Seahawks. Those are some quality wins. And Matthew Stafford over his last four games, 12 touchdowns, one interception. Kyron Williams over his last five games, 131 rushing yards per game. So they've been doing really well. And then the Saints, the last two weeks, both wins, gave up six points in both of them. But those six points were get, were uh, against the Panthers and against the Giants, two of the lowest scoring teams in the NFL. The Saints defense is not the problem. Like you said, I mean, they're sixth in points allowed per game. You can win games like that. We've seen teams with bottom 10 in points allowed win the Super Bowl if their offense is good enough. It's been that offensive factor that has been the what's been lacking for the Saints so far. Derek Carr not really got it done. I will say he did just have his first three touchdown game of the season. Kind of weird that we're going into week six, week 16 and that was his first three touchdown game of the year, but it is what it is. The guy played well, but history also shows that he doesn't really play too many games well consecutively. Normally it's Good game, bad game, average game, bad game, great game, terrible game. He's very volatile, doesn't have much consistency. I'm like you. I'm willing to lay the points here. I think that the Rams, I know that the Rams have the coaching advantage. I trust Stafford to stay hot more than I trust Carr to stay hot. The Rams defense, not as good as the Saints, okay, but it is serviceable, just about league average, and they can pass the ball and they can both run the ball. That ability to run the ball, you know, first of all, shout out to Kyron Williams. I didn't see this coming from him when I was watching him at Notre Dame. And regardless of who was back there, you know, it, it seemed like you could have put Derrick Henry in the backfield and the Rams would have struggled to run. They couldn't run the ball for years. The offensive line, you know, they had some problems. They rotated running backs. Nothing seemed to matter. All of a sudden, they've got it figured out. I just don't think the Saints have the ability to match their firepower. And even if this game ends 17 to 10, that's a cover for the Rams. So, yeah, I'm like you. I'm laying the four. Two full breakdowns, Grant. The people are coming here to get breakdowns. They're getting full breakdowns. I have a bone to pick with FanDuel right now. I know I'm wearing the DraftKings hoodie, but like, why do we not have Alvin Kamara reception props listed? That's ridiculous. FanDuel, you know, I love the I love the guys over at FanDuel, but I mean, they've been cowards lately. I'm not going to lie. I, I've been doing a lot of NBA betting. Uh, like I've talked about here before, I write daily. I do daily write-ups for WSN, um, WSN.com. Go check those out if you want to see who I'm picking tonight and Wednesday's game um, and the games following that. But yeah, FanDuel just hasn't been pub publishing player props for some high-profile players. Guys who are not questionable, guys who will certainly be in the lineup, they just aren't putting them out there. So it wouldn't surprise me if the Kamara receptions is something like that. They know they can get beat. So you know what? We're just not going to publish the line. Yeah, we have receiving yards. We don't have receptions. Let me see if we have anything on DraftKings. I don't think DraftKings has it either, do they? Alvin Kamara. Yep, nobody has Nobody has Saints receptions. Maybe waiting on Chris Olave to get in to see how they're going to break it down and because Chris Olave should play in this game, but maybe they're just waiting to see how many he's going to get, so they have to factor here. I don't know, but that's a great play. I love Alvin Kamara receptions because he's the dump-off king. Uh, we've seen that from him. If I'm going with the player prop in this game, the way the Saints have moved the football is with Alvin Kamara. He's had some bad weeks catching the football, but most of the time, like he's finding ways to go over this line of 29 and a half, so I would lean towards him there. Um, looking at his stats as of late, without um, Chris Olave, he's actually been – pretty dominant catching the football 44 yards 58 yards 50 yards 33 yards going back to Sunday last two Sundays ago against Carolina Panthers he had three receptions for negative 11 yards they found a way to figure him out um, but overall 29 and a half has been a very fair line for him this season yeah I was I have a little tool that I use that finds player props from all the major sports books none of them have Kamara receptions so I, I apologize for the attack on FanDuel. It's not just you guys. It's everybody out there that is afraid of this line. So his receptions have been 5, 3, 6, 3, and 5, 3, 6, 4, and 7. I think usually that line set about 3.5. So I, he, I agree. 3.5, 4.5 might be pushing it, but I think you can probably still get away with it. One thing we also haven't talked about is if the Rams are ahead in this game like we think they are going to be, 
you know, end of game, Saints going to have to throw the football. You know, and Derek Carr, I will say he's not a huge check down guy. He will throw long balls and he'd almost rather throw an interception than check it down. But still, if, you, if you're in a two minute drive and a two minute drill and you got to put something together, the running back pass is always a big option. You know who else needs to learn how to check it down? Who's that? Jalen Hurts. <laughs> yeah, Philly just I, I mean, we're completely changing topics here, but Philly just doesn't look right. Uh, I boil it. I attribute it to a combination of three things. I don't know if you agree with me. First, the loss of Shane Steichen, maybe Jonathan Gannon. I feel like we're not sure because we got to see what happens with the Cardinals, but nobody was really expecting success from them so far this season. Um, so, yeah, the, the loss of the loss of key pl- uh coaches and decision makers we'll call it that uh, and exposing of the secondary the secondary wasn't amazing last year played bad against good quarterbacks but it's because the pass rush was so dominant that you they were able to mask it so you got those two things coming together and then also just I think a, almost a carelessness you know Jalen's turnovers the fumbling problems with Devonte Smith and AJ Brown the offensive lines penalties that we haven't seen in the past I feel like those three things have all just kind of acquiesced or coalesced at one time. That's what made them look so bad. I think it's a lack of ability to overcome adversity. Well, you don't think Jalen has put the hay in the barn or the, the chickens have come home to, to nest or whatever he says? I don't, yeah, like, you know, money, money's cool. Championships mean more. You haven't won a championship, buddy. So figure it out. Um, like, I, whatever the, the phrase is, I, I like Jalen Hurts. I really do. He's being careless with the football. It's not okay. Um, I think AJ Brown literally talks more trash than he he plays half the time. Like it's pretty easy to get in his head. Devontae Smith needs to gain some weight. The offensive line. like Jason Kelsey. Yeah, I've been warned for years about this. We'll stop doing it. Like stop doing it because that cost them the game on the goal line. Yeah, and look, Kelsey is phenomenal. First ballot Hall of Famer. I'm not trying to question his acumen or his resume or his ability or anything like that. But he has been moving the football for years. He, it's something he does. It's part of his little routine. And like you said, yeah, it's part of your, you can't do that. You just can't, you can't pick up the ball and move it forward. He gets away with wiggling it. He gets away with respotting it every, pretty much every play. So he shouldn't be surprised that they're calling him for it. And I love the Eagles offense. Like I know we're picking on the Eagles offense right now. That is not the issue. Like Jalen Hurts, as much as you're fumbling the football, it's not the biggest issue. The biggest issue is James Bradbury needs to go play in the XFL. That's what the biggest issue is. He does in big play slay should never have the nickname big play slay. I know he didn't play that night, but he is not big play slay. He is give up big play slay. Um, and Jack so. Leonard looked pretty cooked too. Then they're not getting they're not getting pressure on the quarterback either. Like they're rushing four. They're not, they're rushing four a lot. They're still, they're not getting pressure rushing four, but they can't blitz because they need to drop people back to help in the secondary because they're that bad there. They just look really bad. They do not look like a championship football team in any way whatsoever. But again, getting off topic here, they suck. They've screwed me three weekends in a row. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. It's not looking good for them right now. They've got an easy schedule to close out the year after they had six weeks from hell. Hopefully they get back on the right track. They get some momentum going because if the playoffs started today, and here, let me pull the standings up. If if the player if the playoffs started today, and you're looking at um, they don't win see. the division. They're a, they're a five they're a five seed right now. Yeah. So the two would play the seven. Six would play the three. They are the five seed. So they would get the Buccaneers in Tampa Bay. So Look, they would be a- they would be favored, obviously, but it's not a foregone conclusion they win that game. Like well, Baker has been. Baker's been one of the most clutch players in the league throwing the ball late in games. He just had a perfect passer rating, and the Eagles secondary has made everybody they've played look good. So Tampa Bay's top 10 in points allowed, Baker's playing well. That's not a guaranteed win. No, like I I went to that first eagles Bucks game in Tampa Bay. There were a lot of opportunities for Tampa Bay to win that game, and that was before Tampa Bay even knew what they were doing. Um so they're starting to run the ball a little more effectively with Rashad White. The offensive line's coming together. Baker's playing well. The defense is really good in the red zone. Like it's not an easy game for them. Now the the Eagles are like minus two eighty to win the division right now. I think just because of how easy their schedule is and how hard the Cowboys' schedule is down the stretch. But if the Cowboys win out, they win the division. Yeah, the Cowboys got at Dolphins. I think the at there is very important. Then they're yeah. home for the Lions, and they are at the Commanders. You can chalk up the Commanders. 
Uh, they own they own Washington no matter where they play. The Lions is an interesting one. Both teams inside of a dome, um, but it is home for the Cowboys. I think it's that Miami game that maybe will decide the fate of the division. Warm weather, though. They can't play in the cold. They can play in the warm a little easier. So. Yeah, that's true. Uh, ra- rounding out final thoughts on this Thursday night game. My favorite player prop, Cooper Cup, anytime touchdown. Only four touchdowns on the year, but you know what? He scored in three straight games. He's getting a good target share. His targets in the last three games, 8-10-8. His receptions, 6-8-8. 111 yards last week, 115 yards the week before that. Bottom line is that you're going against one of the top defenses in the NFL. Yes, they play in a weak division, but you know what? There's six and points allowed. You can chop it up any way you want. That's a good number. You need your best players to step up. Kyron Williams, if you want to get him for an anytime touchdown score, you're having to go around the minus 200 territory. And it's also risky because you're going to be running into a big defensive line, Cam Jordan, all those boys. So, yeah, give me Cooper Cup, anytime touchdown, make it four straight weeks. He finds the end zone. Yeah, I think this turns into a passing game pretty quickly. I think the Rams are going to struggle to run the football a little bit more than they have, and I think they're going to be able to get the ball down the field with their weapons more so. So um, I liked where you're thinking, Grant. Thank you, Tanner. That's all I've got for this game. That's all I got too, Grant. Well, that's another edition of Ride the Line. We're riding today. We are riding. It's only Wednesday, but we're talking about Thursday Night Football. Guys, because we have a full day before kickoff, Get in the comment section, drop some comments, let us know who's going to win this game, who your favorite picks are, and anything else. What, what, what you got coming up for the holidays, any plans like that. Just get active in the comment section. Tanner and I are always down there responding. Like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out when we post. And Tanner, you can get us on out of here. Check out everything WSN has to offer in the comments section. Share, subscribe, like, do it all, and we'll see you on Friday for another episode of Ride the Line, breaking down the entire Week 16 slate.